Welcome to the Big Stud Sales Podcast, where I want to help you nail construction selling. I'm your host, Mike Claudio, owner of WinRate Consulting, a construction sales consulting and coaching company focused on the remodeling industry. This podcast will help you take the guesswork out of how to be successful selling to homeowners, making you a stud at identifying who your market is, where to find them, how to qualify them, and what to do to close the deal. Connect with me on Instagram at WinRate Consulting or email me, Mike, at BigStudSales.com. What's up, studs? If you're listening, you either want to be or are currently a stud at selling in the construction industry. Uh, Ryan and I have been big proponents and advocates over the last couple of years of increasing how much we are reading or consuming content. So we'll say consuming content as a whole, specifically this episode, we want to talk about the what, where, when, and how to read to increase your skill sets, to increase your capabilities, your leadership, your ability to solve problems, which is directly correlated to your ability to create income and revenue for yourself and your business. So Ryan, how many books have you read, you'd say, in the last year or two? Physically read, zero. I I do not read at all. However, I audiobook because... Generally, I'm driving from, you know, one side of town to the other quite a bit. And I can, I put it on, I, I got a subscription to Audible. I put it on 1.5 times and I can listen to a book in about four hours. So I've probably listened to 20 or 30 books here in the last 18 months. Okay. And how do you, what do you do with the content that you absorb from that? How do you take notes? How do you implement? How do you track? Like, what do you do from that standpoint? I mean, a big thing that I try and do is, is implement something. So after I listen to a book or listen to a a snippet from a book, if I'm driving for 30 minutes and I just listen to 30 minutes, I write down one thing that I took. Usually I just make a note in my phone. I write down one thing and I try and implement it that week. So there's got to be something that I can implement for my business within that week. That way I know I, I can try it. If it worked, awesome. Let's do more of it. If it didn't, then no problem. It didn't hurt anything. It's not going to hinder your business. That's for dang sure. So the biggest thing is kind of taking notes and then taking action for me. And we talk about that a lot, right? Yeah. Implement what you learn. So for me, I'm the opposite. I sucked at reading. I had terrible reading comprehension and probably midway through 2016, you know, I had done enough in the entrepreneurial world to like be around some successful people and start listening to some podcasts. And, you know, every, every successful person I was listening to equated some or all of their success to reading. And I sat back one day and said, well, why am I the asshole that doesn't read? Cause I hated it. Cause I was terrible at it. So I said, I'm going to try. So 2017, I read probably 18 books, like physically read them to like train my eyes, train my absorption rate, train my, you know, reading comprehension. These are all things I was bad at because I just didn't do it. And that started this like snowball effect of note taking and implementing and confidence and thought process and strategy and all these things. So I, I really enjoy reading nonfiction books about influential people and then also business books. Yeah. My, my wife tells me, cause I, I always say like, I hate reading. I can't do it. And she's like, you read a lot. You just read on the internet. So I'll read tons of articles. I'll te- I'll read tons of blog posts. Um, you know, I've got all of these people that I follow and I've got courses that I've bought and read and I do a ton of reading. I just don't like sitting down with a physical book and reading it. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of people, especially contractors who are hopefully listening to this, um, you're in the car a lot, right? You know, your long days, early mornings, late nights, like you don't have time to be in there, but you need some sort of strategy to not just absorb, but note take for the content you're absorbing. Yeah. Right. And for me, it was because I used the Kindle app on my cell phone. I could take my books with me anywhere and I would highlight passages in a book and I would copy and paste them into a note. Like I have my like top passages note on my phone. And that helps me with a lot of things. Sometimes it's, I have a problem or a hiccup that I'm trying to overcome. I'll go, I'll go to that because typically it, it ignites some sort of insight into what I'm trying to accomplish. And so, and also I'm a very visual learner. So if the, the actual act of highlighting a passage, copying and pasting it allows me to single out that piece of content 
and, and like kind of store it in my brain picture category. And that helps me a lot when I go back through to try and figure it out because guys, I'm not the smartest person in the world here, you know, but I have a really, really good skill set when it comes to problem solving and dealing with people. And a lot of that has come from not only my own thoughts and failures, but reading books about really influential, successful people and how they problem solve yeah. and how they dealt with people and how they did things. Like one of my favorite books, it's like a thousand fucking pages was the rise of Theodore Roosevelt. I think it is a phenomenally written book, but also the content in it and how he navigated. So that book is from birth up until he was elected president. And there's so many like life lessons in there from overcoming adversity to handling challenging conversations to interpersonal skills. Like it's all, and it's just one book. Like, so I'm, I set a goal to read 52 books in 2018. I got to like 48. I had a second kid that really impacted my reading time, but Come on, kid. so, but like I would read two books at a time. I would read one business style book that I would read in the morning for about 20 to 30 minutes to kind of kick my day off and get my brain working and then I read my nonfiction kind of biography style book at night to kind of like get into a story and kind of put myself in someone else's shoes and world for a little while and kind of decompress from the day. And it was, you know, 20, 30 minutes in the morning, 20, 30 minutes at night. It was kind of how I started my day and how I ended my day. And it, it changed the landscape of how I approach business and marketing and storytelling and the self-motivation and the dedication and the discipline because, you know, Jocko, I read Jocko's books and, you know, discipline equals freedom. It's so true because you're not always going to feel motivated. You're not always going to feel like super rambunctious that day, but you have to have the discipline to do it. And that's where what reading taught me that like setting a goal of reading 52 books for the year, like that skill set of being able to reverse engineer a daily target, you that is so cross platformed. It's not even funny. It can be used in any aspect of business to set the big goal. I use reading because reading was a weakness of mine. It kind of got me out of my comfort zone. But when you're doing it, have a plan, have a process. Like you just consume content because you love consuming content. Yeah. Like that. I mean, that's what I do. I'm a content creator. So I consume content one to learn, but also to see what they did. I want to be able to take what kind of content they did or created or how they wrote it and be able to implement it for my clients. And so that's, that's a big thing for me is I'll buy courses just so I can see how their course was created. So I can use it for my clients. If they want to create a course, I'll watch YouTube videos, not because I'm interested in the content. It's because I'm interested in how the content was made so I can allow my clients to do the same thing. You oh, know, I mean, readings definitely made me a better blogger. Yeah. I mean, absolutely no doubt about it. You know, how to articulate stories and formulate them properly. And I can't, that, that happened just from learning what kind of stories I like, which leads me to, you know, if you're reading a book or listening to a book and you're not into it, move on. Yeah. Don't, like, don't force yourself I've got through two it. or three that like I started, I just, I, I moved on because it wasn't an interesting topic for me. And so I just kind of moved on and, and went to the next one. And, um, you know, I, there's no wrong thing to, to do it. You don't have to push through it, but cause if you're not interested in it, you're not going to pay attention. You're not going to consume it. Well, it's going to, it's going to make you just hate the exercise as a whole. And it, it makes it cause you don't, if you haven't been reading, you're not really into reading. This is going to be a, a lack of comfort zone to begin with. And it's something you're not going to be able to really prioritize easily. So you want to make it something you look forward to. Yeah. You know, you don't want to make it this chore, this drill, like you want to be excited about it and, and set, you know, attainable daily targets. Like for me, it was an hour a day of reading and I still try to read about 15 pages a day. Um, I don't like, I made a thing and I say, I don't listen to the radio in my car. I will not, I'll only listen to a podcast or I will listen to a book. And so there's, there's no radio that's ever on in my car. Sometimes it's just silence because I'm I, you know, I could have recorded podcasts that day and I, I don't want to listen to anything. Yeah. So I'll just drive down the road in silence, but I won't listen to the radio in my car. Yeah. I mean, podcasts that I listen to, I, I struggle with the book thing because I do space out or go down those rabbit holes or my mind will wander. See, I do that when I'm reading. So that's why I have to listen. So but for me though, so I'm backwards, like, or I'm opposite of you is if I'm reading and I wander, I can go back to the page I remembered last. 
when I'm listening, I mean, I'll go 30 minutes and I mean, everybody's been in the car for 30 minutes. Like, how'd I get here? I don't remember making that turn. Right. Like you just kind of zone out. You're in the zone. Like you just space a little. Well, I'm not going to like rewind that book to the part I remember. Like that's where reading for me, I can flip back or catch myself. So I have that trigger that says, Oh, let me, you know, let me go back to this because when I, when I look away from the book, it stops. Yep. If I stop listening to the recording or the audio book, it keeps going. Yep. It keeps going. So, so I guess, uh, people that want to read, they, they should be reading. We're generally talking to entrepreneurs or people that are in some sort of business goal setting kind of thing. Let's talk about some of our favorite books. So what is, uh, I mean, I know we've got a ton, but you know, I've, I've, I've read about 80 books in the last two years. What is your number one go-to book for a business owner that is not a reader? So one right now that I've actually bought for several of my clients is Relentless by Tim Grover. I'm listening to that right now. Yeah, I think we talked about that. So I was on your... It's very, uh, you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners are competitive and, you know, Relentless. Tim Grover was the athletic trainer for some of the top athletes in the world, specifically Kobe Bryant Mm -hmm. was one of his marquee clients. Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, Michael Jordan. Yep. So those guys are like the top competitors in the world or even in the history of the world. And so Tim Grover was their mindset coach, physical coach, competitive coach, life coach. And a lot of what he teaches or what he talked on the book is very competitively analyzed, right? Like sports specific. So and I don't know, a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners are competitive people. A lot of them played competitive sports or organized sports throughout their life. I think that's a really easy one that you can relate a lot of the business tactics that Tim talks about to a sports environment that you've been in before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, it just made it a really easy read. Uh, but I'm going to pull up my list. What's yours? My go-to for every business owner that is a business owner, the E-Myth. E-Myth is probably my favorite business book to help a business owner succeed. And the whole premise behind it is getting out of working for your business and working on your business. So if you can never build a business that works for you, you've just built a job. And if you're a business owner, maybe you want to build a job, but you would be better off going and having that job working for somebody else rather than having to do all of the other stuff that it takes to be a business owner. And so it's putting the right people in the right positions. um, But that is by far my number one recommendation book for any business owner. All right, I'm going to go down my list and I'm going to try and call out like five or six books that I think were really impactful and why. So the first one is if you are under the age of 30, you are required to read The Defining Decade. It is a book about how to properly attack your 20s to not waste them and set yourself up for success going forward. It talks about life, business, finances, relationships. I think it was a very, very impactful book I read in my early 20s that for some things justified some of the things I was doing and for other things like kind of put me in a different perspective. So the defining decade is the first one. If you're under the age of 30, if you're not, or you have kids in that age, would highly recommend reading it. Uh, the next one is starting with, start with why by Simon Sinek. Uh, jab that Ted talk, Ted talk. Guy, right? Yeah. 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 He, so starting with why is, is that yeah, Ted yeah. talk was based off that book. Oh, gotcha. Um, you know, it talks about how to properly motivate yourself, your team, your business, your vision by, you know, basing everything around why you do what you do, not what you do. Um, jab, 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 right hook by Gary V is a phenomenal book about how to properly utilize social media. I think so many businesses, mm-hmm. especially in the service industry, like real estate agents, you know, bankers, consultants, like they're just, that's a, and the thing is like, it's, not, I don't really, I almost overlook that book because I, it's so, it's almost like a necessity. Like I forget that that's a book that I should recommend because I'm like, well, you, that, you should have already read that. Like that's a no brainer. Yeah. <laughs> so another one that I really liked was Shoe Dog. It's the story, it's Phil the Knight story one. of Phil Knight. Yeah. Uh, Phil Knight is the CEO of Nike and it's about how he started from the bottom up and some of the challenges he went through. Um, And just a really well-written book that I think anybody would enjoy. It's a really good read. Similarly to Creativity Inc. Creativity Inc. is the history of Pixar. So for anybody, you know, 
can relate to a lot of the stories behind the Toy Story and a lot of the other movies that have come out over the last 10 to 20 years. And, you know, it has uh, Steve Jobs was a big player in Pixar. If you didn't know that, he kind of bought it almost out of bankruptcy and kind of turned into the multi-billion dollar company that it is now. Um, just a really good book about how successful people make decisions. Um, the next one was Discipline Equals Freedom from Jocko Willenick. Just phenomenal book. Uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel. And then Unstoppable by Craig Ballantyne. Just really good business books about having the right mindset, putting yourself in the right position to be successful. And then the craziest one I've read is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I mean, if you don't know David Goggins, and he's a Marine that he's just done some absolutely wild physical and mental achievements in his life that can't hurt me change my vision on what's feasible for the human being. Yeah. So I don't have as many. Um, and mine are honestly like, I feel like mine are recommended. I mean, I could have listed all 70 or 80 of them because I think I read them because they were good. But. Yeah. So let's see. Let me go down my audible list. Um, actually, this one's really good. If you're interested in video and why video marketing works, it's called The Game Changing Attorney by M Michael Mogill. He owns Crisp Video, which is a law firm video marketing um a law firm video marketing company down in Atlanta, Georgia, and they are on the Inc. 500. They're like number 320, whatever. So they're they're a, let's see, that's a nine-figure business um, just doing video marketing and the power of why video marketing works. That's a, he actually wrote a really, really good book. Um, Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil. That's a really, really interesting. It's actually written in like 1929 or something like that. And it's about... Um, the philosophy behind why good versus evil and how to, how most people think. So if you're a marketer or you're trying to get your message across, this is how most people think and what they react to. And there's a, such a small percentage of people that don't think this way. So you don't either are one of those people or you don't need to worry about them because you're going to be able to reach the masses the other way. Um, let's see. Crushing It by Gary Vee. That's a, a really good social media. Would you read that before or after Jab, 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 Right Hook? Because I've I, read both of them. I'd probably go Jab, 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 Right Hook first, and it will... Because I've read that. I've read Crush It and Crushing It. I have not read Crush It. I've only read Crushing It. Okay. Um, I mean, I, you can imagine what Crush It is. It's the preface to yeah, Crushing It. Yeah, and, and Crushing It, he goes over a lot of the principles of Crush It. So if you were to get one, I would say go with Crushing It because it outlines a lot of the, the previous stuff. But I'd probably go jab, 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 right hook first to get the baseline behind why this philosophy works. And then in crushing it, he really outlines why and how to use social media effectively. And if you don't understand the other one first, I feel like it's going to be a little harder. Um, and then my two favorite probably, uh, um, where is it here? Story brand. So... Building, I read that one this yeah, year. Yeah, building a, building a story brand by Donald Miller, how to clarify your message. So it's all about telling your message through story. Um, it's it's based on the principles of like every movie that has done well. There's a story behind it and what that journey looks like. And if you can understand how to tell your story effectively and really clearly, then people are going to be bought in. And then the last one is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I feel like everybody should have read this, especially if you're a business owner. Um, just helps you kind of, it opens your mind up for what income and wealth could and should be. Yeah. It's just like think and grow rich. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, like standard. They're kind of the same that, thing. Yeah. yeah. But I really like that one. I've, I've actually listened to that one twice. I've listened to story brand twice. Um, cause you always, you pick out something different every time you read yeah, it. Yeah. I've, I've listened to crushing it, I think three times now because that's more of what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm getting ready to listen to the game changing attorney again. Um, and it's not much about attorney work, but it's more of like the, be a thought leader in your industry, how to be an expert. And, you know, it's just so happens that he does attorney marketing, but I'm getting ready to listen to that one again, because there was some really good video marketing stuff in there. So we're going to end on that. Yeah. Um, there's so many books out there, guys, and it's not always what you think it is. Like there's cross platforms and cross industries where you can pick a little thing up here or there. Most of it is about just training the muscle of learning 
mm-hmm. and re-engaging your brain. Cause a lot of what we do in our business every day is monotonous. It's the same thing every week. And if you're listening to a lot of my other trainings around creating a schedule, it is very monotonous. And I'm, I eat practically the same thing every day for lunch. I do the same thing every day for the workout and it's just keeps me sane, but that becomes monotonous. So reading helps re-engage the muscle of learning and allows you to think more clearly, make decisions faster, all of that that comes with growing that muscle. Thank you for listening. My goal is to take the guesswork out of how to properly sell within the construction industry. Once you nail this part of the process and get your sales and business development clicking, it makes everything about the job that much easier. If you have any specific scenarios or questions you want answered, shoot me an email, mike at bigstudsales.com, and follow me on Instagram at winrate consulting. Remember, win fast and win often. <laughs>